All right, everybody, we are back with another episode of Wealth for the Culture. I got a guest on today. I've been looking forward to this one. I've been trying to get on for a little few weeks now. She hit me up. She was ready to come on, share her story. Oh, yeah, killing it. I follow her via Twitter. Y'all know I recently got on the Twitter game. So I just try to check out people that's out here making stuff happen. And this woman right here, making it happen. I, I, I ran into her because of the IA industry, independent insurance adjuster. I'll let her talk more about that. But she doing it all. She she get into every which way, real estate. She making she making it happen. And it's like it's crazy because you know, talking to her, she only been doing this for a year. But it just goes to show, you know, we talk about, you know, changing your situation, doing things, you know, being great out there. And she changed her whole situation and is over here killing it in only a year. So that goes to show that anything is possible for anybody. Adrian, how you doing? I'm doing wonderful. Thank you so much for having me, for inviting me on. I appreciate this opportunity and I'm excited to see what we talk about here. Oh, yes, yes, yes. And it's crazy because I got a first for anybody else because I know she's about to be on everybody's podcast soon. <laughs> like I said, I got the first. first fingers guy. crossed. Fingers crossed. Oh, there ain't no figure. It's, it's written. Hey, anyway, I can help you get on some other people's podcasts. Let me know. I know a couple people with a uh, podcast. But how we normally get these shows started off, do me a favor. For those people that may not know you, you do have a pretty big following on Twitter. But for anybody else that may not know who you are, Kind of break break out, you know, your background, things of that nature. Okay, my name is Adrian. Uh, I'm originally from San Francisco, Bay Area, you know, born and raised. Uh, I lived in Vegas for a few years there uh, before I ended up in Dallas this year. I've done a whole bunch of odd jobs left and right. You know, I put myself through college. I was uh, working Starbucks and In-N-Out Burger for the longest, flipping burgers. I went from there to managing uh, part of the casino, uh, like sports betting wise. And uh, just last year, I made this career change. And what's kind of got me a bit of a following here is into insurance adjusting and just becoming an independent insurance adjuster. And so I've been doing this for about a year now. And it's been a journey. I can't lie. Um, The whole jump into it, you know, trying to tell my family about it and I'm trying to think I was going crazy in my head because I didn't know what I was talking about, thinking I was going to chase storms and things like that. So it's just been a whole journey just coming here and just being where I'm at now. So it's just, I just appreciate, again, you know, just letting me come up here and just kind of talking. Yeah. First off, don't thank me. I thank yourself because you're the one that's out here grinding and <laughs> making it happen. So I appreciate you, if anything, for, you know, being, you know, willing to come on my platform and, you know, just get a gain of the people because it's, it's, it's bigger than money with this. It take a whole different type of human being. Like you, you mentioned, you start off Starbucks and you were doing in and out, working to those two jobs. Then you went into managing, and then you made another ch- a change on top of that. But I want to go yeah. a step back. Like, um, I always like to ask people about their money background or like their family go- coming up. Was like money and fi- financial literacy like a thing in your household? Entrepreneurship, any of that? Oh, no, baby. I'm from the streets. We have some hustlers. Uh, my mom, uh, she's Filipino and uh, came to the States, didn't speak the language uh, about 30, 40 years ago, I want to say now, because, yeah, she came here when she was 18. And so uh, she didn't really speak the language. There was really no financial literacy growing up or anything like that. Couldn't really help me with homework or nothing. And I'm the youngest of seven. So there was quite a lot of us. Um, you know, at points in time, we were homeless growing up. and. Uh, yeah, I've just been out here grinding, hustling, trying not to get back on those streets. Honestly, I've just been working hard to build not for myself, but also for the future and for my future generations. That's, that's, that's big right there. And you mentioned, like, you're the youngest of seven. So, like, <laughs> yeah. And, and it's crazy because I, I heard you mention also that you, like, you, you're trying to bring them on to, like, and, and, you know, introduce them to this world. So, how is that, you know, trying to, you know, change the model of your family and stuff like that? Were they supportive of you? Was that, you know, how was that? It's been a bit rocky this year. I feel like the biggest thing here is they're not understanding the sacrifice of it um, at the moment. You know, I've got a big family. I've got 15 nephews, you know, six brothers and sisters and like aunts and uncles, cousins, the lore. So for all of us to have to come into this mindset shift of are we going to be a team, you know, and like work together and try to build things with everyone or are we just going to, do our own thing. And for a lot of my brothers and sisters, you know, we grew up poor. So now having money, they're just like, no, I'm trying to do my own thing. And that's where it's a bit different for me. I, 
I have uh, flown, you know, halfway across the country, changed my location for work, and I've really just focused on trying to make as much money and invest in as many things um, because I believe the poverty stopped with me and my family. Like we're not, we're not going back uh, to what that was and how that lifestyle was before. Most definitely, and you know, <clears throat> this is a powerful stuff you talk about right here because a lot of people. I come across, and I mean, I've been on this path too, because you know, I'm like in my family. It's, I don't have a lot of people in my family. Okay, got the aquan. I see you. We had the, we had the <laughs> but I, I do see that, and um, you know what that people are, are very, especially yeah, like the family. Like you have family that's never like when you are the first in your family to do something, especially when it comes to making you know a certain amount of money when you don't come from money. There's certain things you have to overcome, and that's one thing that people don't realize is your family actually. And understand, and like you know, you have to understand we have to sacrifice. And for you, it's crazy. Like you got out of your hometown, and I, that's something I tell a lot of people. You know, just get out of your what you're used to. You took a chance on yourself. You got out of what you was used to and changed your environment. And now that you changed your environment, mm-hmm. I think what can you say of like talk about that? Like you le- up and leaving <laughs> and coming out to Dallas, man. And it's crazy because. Let me tell you something. Dollars just attracting everybody that's making money right now. You making money, <laughs> you black, you out <laughs> here in Dallas. That's all I'm gonna say. And I and I was just talking that's about this with somebody earlier today. I'm just like, it's crazy. You know, I got out here a little over a year ago, and just uh, the leaps you take just from being around your people and other people that shine. And like, you out here making money, but you get to run into other people making money like you. What was that like coming out here though? So yeah, that it was a very big culture shock. Like I grew up. Um, in the, in San Francisco, in the city, but I always went to school, you know, I was a kid who took like two buses and the train, walked to school, um, always in like, you know, whiter neighborhoods just for the better education, for the sake of the better education. And then when I moved to Vegas, of course, lived in the white neighborhood. So the first time I came to Dallas, um, to just like land and just kind of see my people and us also just like flourishing out here, it was just a breath of fresh air, honestly, something I'd never really experienced before. And what really attracted me to want to stay and fight for my uh, my spot to stay in the city, uh, just because I hadn't been around many black people that were doing so well, you know, and doing doing it damn well, honestly, because the people I've met out here are, are really doing the damn thing. And it's, it's really nice to see and be a part of. Yes, man. Yes, man. man. And what's crazy is like <laughs> people understand a lot of times you have to just step out of what you what the norm is for you, what you're used to. And like for you to just up and leave and come all the way across the country and to an industry that's new to you, it's not even like it's something that you've been doing. I don't I don't think people understand the different type of mentality you gotta have and the want and the hunger you gotta have to be able to do something like that. So first off, shout out to you. Cause that alone, just being able to bet on yourself is something that a lot of people in this world they're afraid of and they don't want to take that chance on themselves. So you right here, this is just like an inspiration to other people out there that, you know, have that second thought about, oh, should I do this? Should I take that chance on myself? So I definitely. I'm just very big on trusting yourself and taking that leap of faith uh, because you've got yourself here already, you know, to this point in your life. What makes you say you can't do what you want to do next? You know, like what if it all works out is what I keep telling people, you know, that everyone wants to go, what if it doesn't, what if this, what if that, like, what if it just works out? Like, what if that's your thought process on it? What if it all just works out uh, in the end? And like, I came to Dallas on a four day unpaid training agreement. you know, like I thought I was just going to come down here and learn. And I've been here ever since. And that was back in February. So like, it's just, it, it, it's a whole different group. I'm telling you, I told my family, I was like, I'll probably be back in like a week or two, you know, like, I've never done this before. They're probably going to, you know, be like, oh, she doesn't know what she's doing. Kick her out the door kind of thing. Uh, but from the first day I got here, I just tried to work as hard as I could to stay on as long as possible and just network with the right people so that I could stay on. That's a whole different. I didn't know that. Like, so you came out here just on unpaid, just straight off the straight. Like, yep. Yeah. Yep. They called me on Saturday. They said, we need you in Dallas on Monday for four days, unpaid training, a possible deployment. And I said, well, fuck it. Like, I, if I can do well enough in the training, then they'll, they'll keep me around, you know? And, uh, yeah, just took the chance on myself. Spent my little bit of money. I found someone on a Facebook group to room with to split the cost. And then just, I just left. I packed the suitcase and 
when my family called, you know, like a couple weeks later, a month later, two months later, they're like, when are you coming home? I said, you know what? I don't know if I am, to be honest. <laughs> I've fallen in yeah. love with the city and I'm, I'm liking the new work and I'm working hard. So That's crazy. Like, people don't understand how, how big that is. You came out here, no, there wasn't even no guarantee. And and this no. things like this, like, like your whole story, man, you're gonna be uh, your story gonna be told. I don't see you on over <laughs> somewhere. Oh, you gonna see you somewhere crazy. And and it's just it's I don't wanna be the dead horse, but that is just this is I never you probably the first person I met that really took like a, a chance like to that magnitude where it was like, Oh, you might not you may or may not even get paid off of this. But that's what it yeah, takes. <laughs> so my question is how did you even come across uh, the IA industry? Like, can you kind of just break down what this even is to people that may not be familiar with it? Okay, so insurance adjusting is essentially um, processing claims uh, for the insurance carriers. You know, say you file a claim, I'd be the person who uh, figures out all your information, handles your claim all the way through, pays you out if we owe you any money or things like that. And I came across this industry, honestly, a lot of the things I've gotten into just off of Twitter itself. Um, definitely was on Twitter last year and just, you know, using it to how people use Twitter just for fun. But I kept seeing Steven, um, uh, story places, uh, course out everywhere and just would kind of take a peek at it. But I was like, ah, no, I'm not really interested. Um, and I don't know, one day in November, I was just really like, I need to do something different. I need to get up out of the casino. Like I was making really good money in the casino, but I just didn't want to make a lifestyle out of it and like live there and work there for forever. So uh, I seen his course enough times and did my own Google research and was just like, oh, I can make some decent money in this. And uh, I thought maybe, you know, my timeline of it was maybe I'd start working in June or July of the following year, you know, maybe just start getting my licenses together and everything. And, and uh, nope, <laughs> you know, the universe said otherwise that I got licensed and, you know, got all my uh, other licenses, all my certificates that I needed and. By February, they were starting to call just because of that freeze in Texas, and I just ended up down here. It's, it's, it was a, <laughs> it was kind of wild, but at the same time, I felt like I planned part of it, so I didn't feel like I was doing such a crazy jump because I kind of asked for it. I was asking to get out of Vegas. I was asking to change a career, and uh, yeah, and then all these opportunities kept presenting themselves, and I said, well, I'm just going to jump on them. Like I'm not just going to let these go right in front of me. All these phone calls and just say, oh no, I'm not ready. So I just took that jump and just said, yeah. And and it's crazy because a lot of people are call something like that, you know, they'll say it's, you know, oh, it's just a lucky situation or something of that nature. Not understanding, like you was you just took advantage of an opportunity that you prepared yourself for. So that's something I want people to understand. Like you said you you said you took that course in November. Yeah. And you said you got your first license in what? You said December? Yep. So, well, I passed my test December 7th. I got my first license January 6th and I was deployed by like mid-February. Oh, so maybe about less than two months is really all it took um, from getting the course and actually putting in the work. Okay. So you say you took, so, okay, let's break, break this down for people that may be interested because you're out here five figure months and, and, and going crazy, running up the bag and stuff like this. And I it's really you. Like, I, I think I came across Steven after you because I was just like, I'm saying, like, what, how are y'all making this type of money doing this? <laughs> and I remember I ran Yeah, up, I oh. didn't believe the money was this good. Okay. Like, I had read about it, of course, and then did all this research. Of course, I plotted and was like, yeah, this is definitely going to be good money. But it was still such a shock to like come all the way this way, do the job, and then be like, Whoa, my texts are stupid fat. Like I was making what, like twenty three, twenty four hundred a week after taxes on my very first deployment. So like all the money I put in for the license is probably about a thousand dollars. And I made that back, you know, in my first three days working. <laughs> and so for me it's just been profit since, if you think about it. Uh definitely the best investment I've made for myself. Definitely crossed over a hundred thousand this year. So that was definitely a, a big milestone for me and yeah, it, I'd say the the biggest thing is is you can get Steven's course and go along with it. Uh, you'll also need to get you know your state specific course to study and pass. Most people it takes them about thirty days. I gave myself two weeks. I'm just that crazy, so I don't suggest that. I suggest you give yourself that time. 
Um, but then once you pass that test, it's really just waiting on the state to, you know, get your fingerprints, do your background check and everything like that. So it's really just a uh, waiting period. And that's why it takes that extra month or so sometimes to get deployed. But I know people who saw my thread on Twitter and bought their state test and passed it and got a deployment in all less than 30 days. So it's very much how much you want to go get it and how, how hard you want to work towards it. And I just, was trying to take it slow, but it ended up being really quick for me, and I've just been here since. <laughs> That's, hey, and and it's crazy. I'll, don't let that go in your head. Twenty four hundred a, a week, <laughs> yeah, a week. Ain't no ball week. <laughs> she making that in a week, man. And and it's crazy. Yeah, that's on the uh, lower end of things for me now. Like I really won't. About to say, I see, I see got people out here re- recruiting you or, or trying to poach you away, and and it just <laughs> money falling in her lap. And, and this is the craziest thing to me because it's like this is ins- like I know people that do like insurance, and so I always just kind of assume like it ain't like this can't be real that y'all making this type of money. And then I remember I see you, I see Steve, I see a, a couple other people post, and I'm just like. Oh, five figure months <laughs> and yeah. I, I just got a question so like for people that are interested in this field like what is I guess it ain't no typical day but like what what is the workload like because it is some people got to consider like if they just want to you know make the switch okay so it's really going to depend because there's several different deployments and a deployment is just you taking on that like contract with the firm that you're working with um, because essentially the insurance carriers will say like, you know, all state or one of these big name insurance carriers, um, they contract out to these firms and then the firms contract out to you. And so that's why, you know, we get that deployment offer. And so it's just going to depend on the deployment you get, but a typical workload, it's just going to be maybe anywhere from an eight to 12 hour day, uh, six to seven days a week. You know, you're really going to put in some hours, but it's going to be a lot of overtime, a lot of, a lot of uh, opportunity to make money. Uh, like my first 90 days, I really didn't even take a day off. Um, I was just working. I was just like, I want a full check every single week. Uh, but your your day-to-day is going to look like probably calling a bunch of insureds or taking inbound calls from them, um, writing your own estimates, or just kind of delegating how these claims go through. It's really going to de- depend on the deployment because I've had uh, a few different ones this year, and every single one, my role was kind of different in what I had to do. Uh, but essentially, it's just going to be a long day of claims. At the end of the day, you go get yourself a drink or go have a dinner and just relax because you're just going to be right back at work the next day, you know. And uh, But the paychecks just keep rolling in and you end up working so much that you kind of forget when payday is and it's kind of nice. <laughs> All right. Now, <clears throat> I know you have like state specific things. So mm-hmm. Do you have like multiple states that you're licensed in or is it just Texas or like how does that process work? Is it required? So I am licensed in uh, six states. So whatever state you have a license in, you can practice claims in those states. But there's also like 20 states that don't require licenses. So you have some free ones there. Um, But paid ones, I have six uh, besides my home state, which was Nevada because I was living in Vegas at the time. So I had to get that home state and then uh, the five others that I purchased in. I know people who have 10, 15, 20 plus licenses. Um, I tell people just kind of get however many you're comfortable with, you know, uh, depending on what your manager is asking for, what the claim volume is like. I have just gotten, I guess not so lucky, but uh, the the licenses I happen to pick just (laughs) kept me busy with claims all year long throughout the seasons this year. So I haven't had to pick up any more. And then I've also done enough good work to where, even if I didn't have as many licenses as the person next to me, I was still closing more claims or handling things a lot more professionally. So I was more than likely going to stay on the deployment. Okay. So question, what states do you have for anybody out there? I've got Nevada, Texas, South Carolina, Michigan, Minnesota. And why do I always forget this last one? (laughs) Michigan, Minnesota. Oh, Louisiana. There it is. Okay. All right. Yeah, that makes sense though. Cause it's, uh, I would think Texas and Louisiana alone will probably keep you busy. Yeah, they keep you busy. Uh, South Carolina is also there. Uh, Michigan always keeps you busy, and it's only like twenty bucks. So, but it will oh, keep so you these, busy. So these are rel- of- I was about to ask you that, like, what's the cost of like these licenses? Anywhere from twenty dollars to two hundred. Really, just depends, and then they last maybe a year or two. Just depend. It's going to depend state by state. So that's why I say, like, if you're going to get a whole bunch, make sure you have that money ready every year or every two years when you've got to renew 
And that's why I just try to keep my uh, licenses a little low for right now until I'm in need of getting more. So if they're on your level, they done paid for their stuff after one week. That's crazy. (laughs) (laughs) So you went out there for four four week uh, or four day unpaid training. Mm -hmm. Got hired on a month later. Bring it in. I got hired on two days into training. Oh damn! <laughs> I, so you you just like oh you just like cutting up there. So yeah, basically a, that's like what a forty five maybe forty five day turnaround from getting the course to getting actually into the field making. And this is not no way to laugh at. Like, can you like what like what has, what opportunities has this open for you? Just because I know you a hustle. Like I you be interested in every single like I. I, you be I just like a lot cash of stuff. flow. I like cash flow, and I've always been big and a firm believer on cash flow and just trying to get my money to work for me and then come back to me as soon as I can. And um, so this year, I picked up some mobile homes. I bought cash and put some tenants in there and have that being run, so I'm getting that cash flow back. I bought my uh, condo to live in because I was looking for a house originally when I came down here, but ended up... Uh, deciding on a condo just because the housing market's been a little wild this year. And I was like, I'm not going to get gypped on a house. So I ended up buying a condo, but now I like, I rent it out partially to other adjusters and they, you know, week by week as they come into town. Cause sometimes I'm there, sometimes I'm not. Um, I just kind of jumped into a lot of things, just kind of invested the money into the stock market, you know, crypto here and there. I buy like random assets and just <laughs> try to hold on to as much, you know, value because uh, money for me, money comes and goes, but it's just like, if you want, things to hold value, you have to buy, you know, valuable assets and just things around the house that might not seem like it's worth anything. But to me, I know that if I wanted to, I can go turn this into something else, you know, make some more cash and flip this. And so that's just what I've really been big on, just accumulating a lot more assets and not so much liability. I know like I, I still drive my bucket old 2008 Acura TL and that thing is, yeah, she's, <laughs> she needs some work. I'm not going to lie. Get you from point but, A to point B though. That's all, that's all I'm saying, you know. I ain't supposed to ask you this, but how old are you? I'm 25. I just turned 25 a few months ago. 25 years old doing this. 25. Yeah. I 20, man, at 25, I ain't really even know what the heck I want to do. So <laughs> it's crazy. And I'm 28 now. And it's just like, I was just figuring things out at, at 25. So it's just like, see somebody that you just got a whole path already laid out. And you're doing, so you, hold on. You're like real estate for real, for real already. Oh, yeah. So and I, I, yeah, so that's, yeah, that's been my next big focus. So that's my out. You know, I came up with a five-year plan for, um, oh, I'm sorry. I came up with a five-year plan to be an adjuster and how I was going to get out um, and what my exit was going to be. And it was just going to be in, uh, acquiring enough property so that I can replace the money I'm making as an adjuster just by um, getting that rental income every month. So, so I, what sparked in your mind that you need to even think about, like, I need to have some kind of, well, get money by income, basically. But I need to go be looking for things that's going to generate me cash. Because some people will do what you do, get that bag, and just blow it. So what what was the difference? Like, what sparked you to even want to take a different route? Like, what you doing now? I think, I, like I said, like, I grew up real poor. I grew up in the streets. So it's just like I've been trying to figure out for the longest what I can do to make sure that, that I've never got to go through that again or just live that that kind of lifestyle again and then make sure – like, I told you how many nephews I got, like 15 nephews, you know, <laughs> you know schooling, clothing, and all that things. I just want to make sure that everyone in my family is also uh, set too. So that's just always been my change of focus. Even my friends, you know, they've always been like, oh, she's always thinking about 10, 15 years down the line. Like, like I've always thought the money that I'm making now is for when I don't want to work 10 years from now. And that just helps the difference because a lot of people will get money now and blow it. And there's nothing wrong with that. You know, if that's what you want to do, that's everyone to each his own. But for me, I always think, well, I'm not going to be able to hustle and work two jobs or work a 70, 80 hour work week forever. So might as well do it while I can, while I'm young, uh, use this money to make more money. And that way, when I want to relax and need to relax, like I can, and I won't feel as, you know, like, oh, dang, I didn't do enough back then, you know, because I know a lot of people, especially I've worked, like I said, I worked in the casino. So I met a lot of people who were older retired or getting to that age where it's just like they really shouldn't be working but they didn't have any plan they didn't set themselves up at all in their 20s or 30s so that they can you know take that break when they're older 
And I just did not want to do that. I was like, man, y'all got too, too many medical problems, too much going on. I'm going to figure out a way so that I can make this money just hold and hold its value um, for as long as I can and, and just kind of acquire things along the way. I got so I got too many questions right now for you. Because <laughs> so you you've been doing this a year. You got mobile homes, a condo, crypto. You investing you investing as well. Let's just start with the like. How many mobile homes you got? Four. You got four mobile. <laughs> so what? What? Cash, what, baby, cash. What took you to that route? Where? Where? Like Twitter. Like everything else, everything Twitter. everything you doing right now is because of because of Twitter. Because you and it's it's crazy because people need to understand. Like a lot of people think like social media is just some you know somewhere to kill time, but it's really like an avenue where you could go out here and get to the bag and find different ways to make money. That that's really what I want people to understand. Like I remember back in the day, I used to be on Instagram and stuff. You just be scrolling, just pointlessly, you know, liking stuff or your. They're going somewhere and just want to talk to Vin or whatever, but it's really how you use these platforms, the people you interact with. It's, it's the same as what they say in real life about who you surround yourself with. Like you surround yourself with people that's actually out here getting to make something of themselves. Naturally, just by default, you're going to be somebody that's making something of yourself. If you do go the opposite route and do, or, you know, get around people that's not doing nothing, well, you're going to be another person that's just out there not doing nothing with your time. And for you, this is crazy. So you got four mobile homes. Uh, you pay for those cash. Oh, oh you got. Yes, I was just. I was got, just stacking. Like I said, I didn't take a day off. I was stacking money. I was trying to flip it here. You know, do some swing trade in here and there, just to try to build as much cash as possible. And then when I found some opportunities, I purchased them. Um, just straight cash. You know, clear titles. Uh, some of them I had to move to other lots and things like that because they were on deep. You know, deep deals and. Uh, but yeah, just try to get some tenants in them, try to get some decent cash flow back, and that's uh that's just so where those are. And just, that was so those are just now income producing properties every month for you. That's just that's mailbox money. You just go to sleep, wake up, get that check every first of the month. <laughs> and that's really what people yeah. understand. I want people to understand this too about you, because I don't really hear people say this often. Like so a lot of times people just, you know, they find a way, like you've got a whole plan developed. And this is something that a lot of people don't think about. They just kind of get started with something and just do it and, and figure it out. But you literally sat down and had, got your whole plan together. And you and it's not just enough to get a plan together. It's like when, I, when people go get information, right? They'll go get information, but they won't execute on the information. They won't take no action. So if y'all don't take anything from this, just go take some action. Take a chance on yourself, man, like she did. Because... You have to just start. Oh, I keep telling people, everyone always gets into my, you know, DMs, people hit me up. Oh, Adrian, how'd you get into this? Or how'd you start that? Or what do you, you know, I just, I'm like, I literally Google as much as I can, you know, try to figure out as much information as I can. I take that calculated risk amount in my head. How much am I willing to spend? How much of my time am I willing to spend on this? And then I just start, like, you just got to jump. Like, otherwise you're going to try and put everything together and have it be perfect. And it's never going to be perfect. There's never going to be a right time or a right any moment like you've just got to take that jump sometimes and that's the difference for a lot of people is you know um someone took that jump and you got left behind like <laughs> and so you either gotta you know get on with it and, and start moving or, or you're gonna get left behind and and it's gonna i mean you've seen how much inflation's already hitting us you know how, how much the pandemic has hit us and how much the housing market has changed like everything it's coming it's coming quick and a lot of people aren't realizing it and we're trying to be young and dumb forever and that's going to get shorter and shorter. That time frame for where you can be young and dumb, it's, it's getting shorter and shorter because you have to get on your stuff and, and start thinking about your future self and then your future family uh, a lot sooner than our parents' generation did. And for you to have this mentality already, it's, it's crazy. Because a lot of people, you work in seven days a week and you're still able to keep up with everything that's going on. And I don't think people are understanding the type of grind and dedication you got to have so you know want to accomplish a goal. I don't think people understand the power of like just focusing in for a five year span and how that could change it. for you. One year that pretty much changed everything you got going on for you. And there's, and a lot of people don't realize that's all it takes. Like one year changed my life. I started this podcast 
and people don't really, like you need to get with you a podcast because you, you got some stuff to talk about. <laughs> <laughs> you need to get some content. I you keep talking YouTube, about it. I've man. been I've been talking about it. We need a YouTube a day in the life something. Uh, I, don't, I don't know what you gotta do, but you need that going. That would be so fun. A day in the life. That'd be so fun. Because don't nobody you I didn't even know you was doing uh mobile like I know you because of IA. And I and that's what it's you. Yep, and I also hit you up. Remember, I hit you up because I was asking about those Turo yep. cards because I'm about to get into that game too. So, hey, uh, yeah, those, I respect just, you. Uh, car market was a bit wild, uh, but definitely something because I'm always using Turo when I'm all out. So I was oh, like, yeah, man, the, I need to get me car some cars. Right now is crazy, but it's yeah. still some deals it's out there. To, it's starting to look like it's, uh, yeah, it's tapering going, off. At least. Yeah, I'm yeah. about to probably sell mine and uh, figure out get get probably two cars now, but. Yeah, this is getting a little. It's getting a little wild out here. But you gotta, like you mentioned, people. You gotta stay ahead of inflation right now. People like me, I, I work a day job as well. But most day jobs, you only gonna get like a two, three percent raise at the end of the year. Inflation looking like six percent on a low end right now. So <laughs> if you, if that's the case, and that's just what they're telling you. And that's what I'm saying. But it, like people gotta understand if that's what it's looking like right now. Just imagine, like, you losing money every year, saying that your job, not trying to go, not trying to buy income. Like, if you're not investing just, your money somewhere. Or just that's letting like, your money sit in a savings account or just sit in your bank account. Man, don't give me um, like, back. I'm just like, just go ahead and throw that money somewhere. Hopefully it I'm comes sick. back to you, you know? <laughs> Crypt- cryptocurrency is my savings. That's where my savings is. That's what I, my savings have been for, for a few years now. And it is what it is. Like, I ain't messing around with nothing else. Like, I... I Take it from somebody that messed off their money when they used to. Like, I used to be a crypto and messed off the money because it came so quick. And at the time, you realize, like, you got to do something that's going to sustain and generate you money mm-hmm. every, like, it ain't got to be every day. But I kind of make money month. slow. It could be every month, like, every slow. year. Like, as long mm-hmm. as you bring in something to supplement, because that that 2%, 3% extra you're going to get every year because you're going to work ain't going to cut it. Like, you're going to be losing money daily. And then you got to just sit there, like you mentioned, it's losing money there too. Like savings accounts are done, man. They done cut they done slashed interest so bad. At this point, the best thing to do, you may not be a fan of it if you out there listening, but money is cheap right now to go get. I got people that's out there, you go get go get a lender, find a lender and get you a loan and go do it, run a play. Do something like that. I have a mentor out here in Dallas. He does transactional lending with people all over. Uh he actually is cool with a couple people that you uh know. And they've plugged him in with people. I've I've lo- I've loaned him money just to make money on interest on my money, and I refer people to him. I refer a couple people, so it's ways to make your money work. For oh, it. I'm definitely gonna need that information. I got you. I got you after this. Yeah, I got you after this. Yeah, because <laughs> he he uh he paying out interest on money, six month turnaround. So it, it's ways to have your money always flowing, man, and, and generating you money. You money the one thing that. While you go to sleep, your money don't never have to go to sleep. It's something that can work for you 24-7. Money and can keep working. You have more than eight hours a day to exactly. make money, more than 12 hours a day. So 24-7 find work, a place man. to park it. Even if, I, even if my money makes me 50 cents, you know how happy I get? I go, wow, I didn't lose no money. And a girl made 50 cents. You and that's what, what people mean? don't understand with the compound. And like, you got to start somewhere. I remember it was a time where <laughs> I would throw like $50 at a time in the investments. And yeah, okay, you make maybe a dollar here, two dollars there, five dollars. You like, oh, okay, I'm really doing something. But then when you can get to a point where you could just dump dump thousands of dollars into the market at a time, now you got that exponential growth that people don't realize. And and that's what yeah. that's when it really I got it. Actually, I didn't talk to you about mobile homes because <laughs> well, how much did you pay for your mobile home? Uh, just like just curious, like how much? Varying ranges, anywhere in the low end, uh, seven. 7500 high end was like 20. Yeah, because I had somebody on here uh, of like last year and she ran up, I think, about 300K in eight months part time doing mobile home and she was flipping. So mm. it's definitely a market for it. I know that. So I, I, I definitely got to hit you about that. Yeah, no, I'm trying to hold on to everything as long as I can, hopefully forever. Uh, just because, like I said, I'm addicted to the cash flow. Like everyone's got their own different plans for the investing journey, and mine is I just want more cash to come back so I can park it in other avenues. But that's a play right there. That that's a gem that you just dropped. Like a lot of people are so worried about the quick flip, not realizing that if you hold, you know, just let that, you know, you can literally pay for your life and put it on autopilot. 
just mm-hmm. off holding assets. That's going to pay you every month or every day. I have you want to look at it. like crypto pay me every week, every day, daily, by the hour. I get paid 24 seven from crypto. Some days it's up, some days it's down, but my, my good day is always our way to bad. And then it's like, it's worth it. Same with the, <laughs> you in the stock market too. I see you in one pause. <laughs> you in crypto too? Yes. Okay. What's your, what's your, we got your, no, what's your top cryptocurrency that you, that you like? I'm just holding on to just the basics, you know, the stuff that everyone's always talking about, Bitcoin, Ethereum, Solana. I don't get too fancy with it. It's not something I know a lot of. Uh, Honestly, I've just been trying to learn a bit more. That was going to be my focus for this next year because I felt like my things in the stock market have been good, but I really want to put a focus on crypto in the next year because I know even if I get in within the next five years, I'm still very early to the game because people don't understand like most of the world doesn't even know what you're talking about, you know, when you (laughs) speak about crypto still. Um, So that's why I was just, it's in my plans. That's probably going to be a big focus of where I start throwing money next year, but I just kind of like auto invest weekly buys on, on those big names. Okay. And and it's, it's crazy because you, like you said, you just, Hey, you take the advice of others and run with it. And you're not afraid to go take, take some advice. Like you don't even take an actual, it's crazy. I'm listening to you right now. And I'd like you just was telling me how you uh, linked up a Porsche. Y'all about to get started with the real estate and stuff like that and buying oh, yeah. land and all that. So it's like, you just don't go. <laughs> so it's, it's, <laughs> it's a- like what you were talking about earlier. You know, you were saying that the people you surround yourself with is really going to be, you know, what your life is and how you make it. And what is it they say? You know, your network is going to be your net worth. And so that's what I really enjoyed about adjusting this year most. Um, you know, I can talk about the money I made or the things that I got, but it's really just the relationships I've made and, and the network that I've built to where, you know, if something's going on, I can hit someone up and they might know somebody for me, you know, or, Hey, I'm trying to get into this and, and, you know, they can put me on over here. And so that's just been the coolest thing. And the people I've got to meet and especially getting to meet Portia, I'm so, so excited about what next year looks like for me because of this land stuff. And, uh, what we're about to get into here and I'm supposed to be helping her make some content. So she'll be dropping some courses and things like that. So that's going to be, be a, it's going to be a good time. Man. I see, I see great stuff coming for y'all. Cause man, I, I'm, I'm excited to see what y'all do, especially when you start getting the content <laughs> pumped out. Cause you, I'm telling you, you need a, you, you need a YouTube. You got too <laughs> much to say. You need a YouTube or something. Like Twitter ain't enough for you. You need a YouTube. You need a whole YouTube platform or something. Cause you got I game get that, that people- so much, and I just have no idea. I'm like, why would people even want to listen? Like, even when I dropped that first thread, I said, you know what? No one's even going to read this, and it actually had took off a little bit. And I was like, oh, okay, so people are going to hear me if I say something. And so I've been hearing a whole lot about the YouTube stuff. I've been talking to myself about uh, getting this stuff together and just trying to get the, I don't know, just trying to write down ideas and see what I would actually talk about or I don't know yet. <laughs> you said enough just in this episode to go get you about 10 videos. <laughs> like, like people don't, people don't like, you got to understand, like, there's somebody out there that don't know what you know, like, even though you may, you may downplay what you got going on and think that you're not an expert at what you're doing just yet, but there's somebody else out there that, you know, they at levels, they don't even know nothing, you know? So that's why I always tell people, like, even if you're at level one or two out of 10, it's still the level one could teach the people that they ain't even got started yet. The level two could teach level one Very and level cool. zero. So don't sell yourself short and think it ain't something that somebody want to listen to you teach because I didn't think nobody would want to listen to this podcast. And somehow I got like over 5,000 plays on on this podcast for whatever reason. That is fantastic. It's like you have to understand there's somebody out there that don't know what you got going on. They may be older than you and don't even know what, like didn't even know nothing about that. Like I've come, in, I come across people all the time. And they were like, oh, you know, I heard this on this podcast. And podcast taking off right now, so they get to hear your story. And now they're going to go find you. Is your Twitter deactivated? Uh, for the moment, I'm working right now. So, yeah, just a little bit. <laughs> oh, I was like, I'll try to, I was like, dang, what happened to us? I'm like, don't. <laughs> Twitter can be a powerful place. And, and more power to you because if you, you're stepping away from it's it gets overwhelming with information. I, I will say that. Like. Well, it's just uh, I got to focus on some more uh, things that are more important to me at the moment. And uh, so that's just my major focus right now and just finishing out this year real strong. And so, yeah, I might be back next year and, and all that. And and I was just, that's why I was excited to do this little podcast because I know everyone's going to be like, hey, where'd she go? Like, <laughs> I'm still around. I'm still in like our flag group. You know, people who have my number can definitely reach me. But 
uh, just taking a break from the whole social media thing. Oh, but that's a, that's definitely something too that people gotta understand. Sometimes you do have to take a step back because I know I think Portia said she was all going for the rest of the year. And I was like, dang. Yep. <laughs> and that's why, like, we're about to be in grind mode here. So it's just like I've got to get focused. I'm about to start this other little uh, insurance job that I got, and so I was just like, I got to stay focused. And say a little insurance job, and you over here making more <laughs> in a week than people making in a month at day jobs. They don't. They not little about that. Come on now. <laughs> Put some respect <laughs> that on is it. True, but- that is true, but this one is just more of a, it's like a freelance kind of thing. So it's not really the whole, I have to be working six, seven days a week type thing. So that's why I said it that so way. You, look at that that. You, don't, you don't got a whole different side hustle just off of, you know, doing oh, good man, work the stuff that I'm and being somebody that somebody want to look for. Yep. Yep. Yeah, the stuff that I'm getting into now is I'm really excited for. We're going into like a, this drone software company. They're they're trying to do teach these drones how to do these planes and stuff like that. So that's something that I'm really looking forward to in this next year, just like learning all that information, just finishing up my drone licensing, and yeah, just it's been a it's been a year. That's for sure. Just acquiring skills. I just got my notary approved. Me and my uh, boyfriend just got our notary commissions done today. So we're gonna do a little mobile notary. Uh, that, that's where it's at. I got my notary commission after I met Andre Hatchett. <laughs> like, it just, know, I've got a, I'm going to definitely have to ask you a few things there because, I, like I said, we just got our commissions, all of our supplies and everything, but I'm just trying to figure out, okay, what's my next step with this? Yeah, I'm still um, learning. See, that field, I'm still learning. I got so sidetracked with Turo, I never really got to dive into it. I just heard about it. It was, And it's a cheap entry. Uh, it's not expensive oh, to yeah. get started. So that's why I tell people, like, I, I told people I know in real estate mainly because if you... Um, that's really what a lot of people do. Go be a loan signing agent. Don't don't yeah. get that figured mm-hmm. out. Once you get that figured out, that's where you can really start money, making some crazy yeah. money. I've, uh, I actually ran into a lady that's a notary out here, uh, and she's out there. She got her own company killing it. So, I had Andre Hatchet. You want to? That's one person I said. You want to know something about the notary game? That's the person to go find. Andre Hatchet on yeah, social I've media. I've definitely seen his course. Definitely, definitely picked up his course. So definitely uh, something I'll be working on and trying to get into here over the next couple of weeks. Yeah, but yeah, uh, we're just uh, resetting, getting focused. No, for sure. But I, I definitely want to thank you for coming on. Just giving a little yeah. bit of insight on, cause, cause nobody, matter of fact, I got a couple other questions real quick about the IE business because okay. we branched off into all the other stuff you got going on <laughs> while working seven days a week, putting in 12 hour <laughs> days. Somehow she still got time to go out here and run up bags and other stuff. So I was partying too. You can't, can't forget that part. I was still living life. <laughs> well, I don't know. Right now, this sounds like a, a sweet place to be, being in the IE industry, because you get to go run up the bag, <laughs> and you get to have fun, and you work remote. Well, I, actually, is that a, is it a remote or like, or do you have to go to like an office or something? So my first five months of the year, I was in office. Um, the reason I had left that deployment, uh, they offered me, you know, to stay on as long as I wanted, but I left that deployment because they wouldn't let me work from home. They're like, go ahead, work from home for two weeks and then come back. And I was like, to show you that I could work from home and then come back. I was like, nah, I'm going to go find somewhere else. So uh, every deployment since has been remote. And that's just how I'm probably going to keep it <laughs> from here on out. Just because uh, the office life, you know, if I've got to go back, I'll go back. But they'll have to pay me a lot of money in order for me to agree to commuting into the office. But I wouldn't knock it. You know, you get a lot of your experience. You get to be around a team. You know, you get that one on one or that that group help a lot more than you do. Uh, trying to do this job from home and from you know your computer and just only being able to message somebody as opposed to turn next to your neighbor and hey, like ask a real question. Okay, so what you recommend that for like people that are just getting started into I? I've seen people. Uh, I mean, like I said from the thread, I've seen people since I posted that thing. And they've gone their first deployment was remote, and I was pretty jealous because I was still in the office. <laughs> like, and they're still on that deployment till this day. You know, still three four months in working from home so it's really just going to be if you're a go-getter of course you can go get this money you can stay on those deployments as long as you're willing to put in the work this is not an easy job i would have knocked that i de- it's definitely mentally draining it's definitely a lot of hard work um, but it's rewarding you do get to help people and you do make a whole lot of money so i mean at the end of the day i've done a lot more work for a lot less money that's why i just i tell people all the time i'm like yeah you might get a little irritated by it sometimes here and there but those paychecks will make it worth it, and and their quality of life is just going to go up. Hey, that was a bar to sell too, because a lot of people don't understand. They do a lot of mentally draining, like overexerting themselves and work that they do every day, and then they'll come into something like this and be like, "Oh, this is too much to do for this," not realizing that it's a, a blessing in disguise for them. 
because it could put them in a situation like yourself to be able to go and just run it up in all types of different avenues of investing. And I'm sure I'm gonna see you with a some type of course sooner or later, or some type of content. I'm you gotta, on it, yep. you got to, because there's no reason you shouldn't. So <laughs> run up that bag. I'm telling. Been busy getting to this bag. You know what I mean? Oh, for sure. <laughs> I, I, what I do want to do is I want to thank you though for giving me your time coming on this platform. Just, just you know, spreading you know some knowledge to people because a lot of people don't have this information and they don't know they don't know what they don't know. And it's good to see somebody because a lot of people think that, you know, it's something that can't be done. And to see somebody that can, you know, pick up, take a chance on themselves and in one year go turn their whole situation around, inspire their family, inspire other people as well, and just be a motivating factor for them. That's something that's within itself, just something that's crazy. So I yeah, appreciate you coming through. I, I appreciate you for having me. You know, my first podcast, hopefully not my last. I definitely would love to come back maybe maybe one day could share some more information with you. And uh, I appreciate oh, your no, time. We, we always, we got to double back on all the guests. So, <laughs> hey, that, that's just for sure. Now, I do have one last segment I like to do. I like to do a talk to the culture segment. I just run off five questions. You answer them the best of your abilities. And then we can wrap okay. up. So the first Ooh, one. Okay, you're going to throw me on the spot. Okay. Yeah. So it ain't nothing crazy. First one is just what does wealth look like to you? Ooh, wealth looks like to me, uh, like I said, I, I, the money I invest is for people that I'll never meet, you know, generations way, way past me. Uh, so they don't have to survive to grow up, you know, that they can live in abundance and flourish and be happy and healthy. That's what that's what wealth looks like to me, just making sure that those next generations are set up and straight. Uh, you know, I'm going to live a good life here. It's going to be fun, but I'm really just focused on making sure the people after me live an even better one. Okay. Now the next question is, give me one book recommendation. It can't be rich that poor that though. The psychology of money. Okay. Oh yeah, I've actually read that. That's a good book. Yeah. <laughs> That's a good one. It's a, if you don't know how money works or why, you know, you have to have a different mindset when it comes to money, definitely check that book. Now I always ask this, we all about the black community here. What is one thing you think the black community needs to improve on? Community. I mean, we need to bring back real communities and trying to build together. Uh, everyone's trying to get it on their own. And until we realize that we need to unify and, and work together. And <laughs> that's the only way we're going to really take back what we lost as a group. Big facts. You want to go fast, go along. You want to go far, go together, man. And that's something I definitely can attest to out here, especially since I got to Dallas. It's, it's crazy. So that is a big bar right there. That don't let that go over your head. Don't stop trying to do everything by yourself, man. Because there's so much that you can do just by reaching out and you know getting help from somebody else. So being willing to accept somebody else helping you out. This next question, because I got you first on this podcast. What is next for you? Because I want to be able to look back on this and be like, I hey, she told y'all. Oh man. Okay. What's next for me? I think the biggest focus right now is. Uh, like I said, I want to get a part of this startup company, this drone software company, because they're trying to put themselves to be publicly traded in the next four years. Um, so I'm just trying to position myself to do good work and hopefully get that full time offer. I'm trying to get paid in equity and just grind for the next four years of my plan. And uh, then you guys will see me beach after beach after beach <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> four years from now. Now, real quick question. How did you even come across that opportunity? <laughs> network baby network that's honestly all i have to tell people is uh you know you just make the right kind of friends or just talk to people and it was actually an old manager from the last deployment i was on who called me while i was on uh, vacation in vegas and said he had gone on with this new company and wanted to give me some info see if i wanted to come aboard and yeah it's just network it's honestly that's been a lot of my opportunities here i really can just pick up the phone and call a few people like hey you know i need some work and they'll they'll send me in the right direction so networking is a big thing all right now i know you deactivated your social media but <laughs> for the people that's going to be feeding and follow you when you get back how can they find you okay so if i can come back to this twitter it's going to be uh at a d r i c r u m p 23 uh but like i said i'm going to be off for a little while here Trying to figure out when you know what my next steps are and um, and uh, they focus on things that I'm that are more important to me. Um, but uh, I'm in some Slack groups. I don't know. I'll pop up. You guys will see me uh, here and there. 
I'm sure I'll definitely get some content done. Me and my boyfriend are working on some things, hopefully in the next few weeks. So, uh, but I'll, I'll definitely drop it. And if it's not me, then other people in the adjuster world will definitely uh, spread it around. So you guys will definitely see me. <laughs> sure. Now, I do want to thank you once again though, for coming through. And, you know, we'll have all that information in the show notes. Shane, on, Shane active on the social media right now, but she'll be back. So I ain't got to worry too much. And if you do, just go listen to this episode, man, and, and get a little bit of her game before she starts flooding y'all with all the content. So like we always say on this podcast, what good is success? If everybody around you is still struggling, man, each one reach one, each one teach one. And this has been another episode of What for the Culture, and we are out.